Hello and welcome back once again. A new day, a new dawn. We're in the semi-finals. It's ESL New York EU Qualifiers Day 2. And today we're going to find out who qualifies to go across to North America in about a month. It's going to be G2 and Envious, the Battle of the Frenchman. Although, of course, there are some Belgians thrown in the mix as well. I'm Vince, once again, joined by Dust. And we're going to be getting the best of three underway shortly here on Inferno. How are you doing, man? How you, you got plenty of rest? I did, actually. I did. Uh, I went to bed early after watching some more Defenders, of course. Great show. Don't spoil it for me, chat. I'm not done. Do you know we'll be done, Vince? This tournament today. What a segue it, it, that it was. It will, yeah. Were you impressed mate. by that? It was like a 7 out of 10. Fair enough, I'll take that. Decent. Decent. Better than yesterday for sure. With the big nips and all that good stuff. Brilliant. Starting it, starting it low, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta set the bar low, Vince. Gotta set the bar low at the beginning so that you can't, you, you know, once you're at rock bottom, you can only go up, Vince. That's true. That is true. Definitely. But neither of these teams have met that so far, I guess, in this event. They're both... Swept aside their competition in the first games, 2-0. Right. Both I games were pretty, you. pretty Good solid. Segue. They're pretty one-sided games as well, right? That's like, no. I think I expected maybe the Hellraisers game to be a little bit closer than it was, but again, when we came into that game with two new players, not really knowing too much about them, G2 mm -hmm. would look very good against Pride, and uh, I, I'm actually really curious to see how this best of three plays out. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen these French go up against each other multiple times now with these lineups and online and offline play combined. And it's been G2 who has won the majority of the time. I think it's 8-3 to three if you combine everything in favor of G2, including G2 having beaten Envious on Inferno a couple of times in online play. But as we open up this round, Scream getting some window room control, able to take down shocks in the process. And so this will give Envious a little bit of breathing room i guess you could say give them a slight edge to kick things off as they're very passive with that bomb on t-spawn and no one's pushing down banana but they do have the leverage over here on the a side of the map at this point uh, bomb is the way back at t-spawn with two players next to it both rpk and six are there so a declaration of intent but we're not going to see any Fast play just yet. Kenny's going to go looking. I think he did spot both XMS and Happy in the apps. And there's a third player with them. Now they're going to start to traverse up with the bomb. They still have the option of rotating to B if they so choose. And with Apex all by his lonesome, that certainly would be the site to take. But Envious, this is an extremely slow round. Yeah, G2's considered. trying to make a play. You can tell that because they're low on numbers. They're actually getting down middle and into alt. So this could actually get kind of dangerous. A sixer, the bomb gets picked up. That's a big kill for G2. And MVK starts to pop off here. XS does win a key duel out in middle. And Happy chimed in as well. And so it does actually leave Apex in a 1v2. But at least things were slowed down. And Apex is going to have a chance to go up against some weaker opponents as far as health goes. One on two, 15 seconds left. Both Envious members have been tanked quite a bit, but XMS is going to land the headshot all the same. Envious do pick up the pistol after t claiming the first kill. It was looking a bit sketchy for them in the mid portion of that round. But they do hold on just about. Yeah, that little maneuver that G2 made in the middle certainly gave them a fighting chance. MK catching a couple of kills, particularly dropping the bomb carrier, really helped out. But XMS coming out of boiler was kind of a move that allowed. A way back in for Envious, and particularly just holding that headshot angle after he had low HP kind of negated the fact that he was low. I mean, it was going to have to be a headshot for Apex no matter what his health bar was looking like and couldn't find it. So Envious will take the first one here as we will move on to round number two as G2 actually not going too heavy handed on this pistol round. Um, you know, they do get head armor on a couple of players, but it's not as if they went, you know, all hands on deck as far as armor and upgraded pistols go. They do have some gimmicky stuff set up, though. I will say that. This part, the spot that MDK is playing well, is sometimes very hard to clear. They also had a boost on lane as well. Or art side, excuse me, but it doesn't look like that's going to come into play. Three Mac turns in the UMP. Farming certainly on the cards if MB have their way. Looking to push through Banana for the time being. Of course, these players have a lot of history with each other on opposite sides. Teams together, played against each other for years and years. Apex and MBK going to take down RPK between the two of them. Does put MBK in a bit of a sketchy position himself now. 
He's not called for any reinforcements for the time being. He's still be holding B by himself. Very powerful player. In fact, I think he's got boosted up. Yeah, he jumped up and he put down another smoke on Banana, so this does slow down Envious a bit more. Makes him come down to the last 20 or so seconds, but they will be executing on B, and we already see Apex and Kitty S making the rotation, and the Banana Flanks coming in as well from Body. Flashbang in the eyes of Apex, can't see anything, but MBK is going to go off with Mac 10 and he picked up and uses against them. There's not much time left, and GT were getting the kills where it counts. Body from the backside has rotated through Banana. And we'll just wreck Sixer, and that is the round done. They run out of time. Not good at all by Envious. Happy's going to get the last kill and does at least keep his Mac 10 intact, but very poorly played in the end. And got to tip your hat to MBK. He did a great job holding B by himself. Yeah, good use of utility as well as just, you know, using a spot, again, that can be very difficult to clear. It's so unnatural to peak that boost position because as you're coming in, you're having to worry about, you know, someone pushing the smoke CT spawn. You're having to worry about coffins. You know, you're clearing fountain, you're clearing, you know, dark corner, you know, you have your crosshair at that headshot level on the site and flicking up there can, you know, just kind of sometimes be the last thought on your mind and MBK took full advantage of that and they will tie the game right back up at one apiece. And it's looking to force right back up those who are going to happen those scrappy beginnings as teams fight for economic control. We did have Envious going for control of the apartments and window room. They do have... Happy still posted up in this area. Scream looking to make some headway up middle. Does do a lot of damage to Shocks. Might chase it down. But Shocks gets out of there. That does give Archside mid to Envious. Yeah, they have made a lot of inroads already with plenty of time left. And even though they lost the previous round and it wrecked them economically speaking, they are in pretty good shape at the moment. And that can turn in the blink of an eye considering they're up against M4s and a wide variety concoction of weaponry. That flash is completely decimated Scream and Apex will finish that kill off before he gets one deep by X and S is looking for a second. What won't be happening? Body holding down the fort and hits what to do. Looking for a third, the Galil. Not quite on point to deliver a 3k, but very well held all the same. And now Happy, who's by himself, has got to somehow dig through arches and try and reclaim this bomb. Doesn't really have much time. He has a Galil. This would be worth saving. If he chose for that, but he's going to go for it. Has to get a move on. Time is of the essence too. He's going to go out for that peak. MPK spraying down. Finally gets his man and Envious will concede their second consecutive round. Yeah, and this is where you think that money is now an issue. And they're going to have to start considering just taking a save and making sure they get ready for a full buy in the next round. G2's won the early economic war in that regard. Thanks to that victory. What's also interesting that I'm seeing from G2 in this game is that they have completely swapped their sights. I, I could have sworn when I was watching G2 play Inferno earlier this year that Body and Shocks were playing B together. And Apex and MBK were kind of playing over towards a pit and apartments, but it's completely swapped now. The, the pairings are the same. The same two people are still working together on each side, but on the opposite ends as XMS with the Deagle actually takes down Shocks in the apartment. So even though they have very little to work with, they do... I have an early man advantage in this. Yeah, Deagle claiming kills again. XMS seemingly on point with this today. He's done quite a few one digs already. He's down to 35. This is an important round for G2. If they were to get broken down here, things could get pretty messy real fast for them. Especially considering that Envious would pick up a bunch of these weapons too. In their pursuit for round 5. Nate's being exchanged, not really doing a great deal to the terrorists. Still have 50 seconds to rummage together a rotation. Once again, MBK's by himself. This time, it's not just a pistol. He actually has the M4A4, so 30 bullets of stopping power. If Envious try and make a, a real go of this B site. Apex is laid in wait, though. His spidey sense is tingling, telling him that the B is very likely about to get aggressed on. Go for the run boost. That's going to get quite a bit of movement onto the site. But MBK says no. Shuts everybody down. Doesn't get the ace. But he definitely deserved it. Apex comes in for the final one. So after G2 concede the first frag, they definitely remedy the situation.
Yeah, I mean, that first frag gave some leverage to NJSV, and they were able to force a rotation. They had NBK alone at B for the most part. Apex did make a rotation to CT spawn, sure. But, you know, a smoke was basically going to cut him off from being able to do anything in CT spawn. They didn't have once they went for the run boost instead. But it just didn't matter. NBK with the solo effort there from the dark corner just lines up four and pretty much shuts down the round by his own hands. Very little assistance required. But Envious will be on to their first full buy now. AK's across the board. Full utility at their disposal. Again, this is a team that's usually that's going to be pretty default. You know, just trying to get control of apartments, trying to get control of top banana. It's also a map where Happy's a little bit more active. You know, not just always solo lurking in a one-on-one -on -one four splits, but can kind of be a little bit more used to actually grab control of things. And you see him actually looking to get in the fight on the balcony, but doesn't really find the angle that he wants on body and begins to withdraw. As again, that bomb is way down in T-spawn, so they're making sure that that bomb is never getting caught out somewhere. Want to make sure they can always go back and grab it after they get some map control. And after having control of apartments, they actually concede it. They really just want to focus up on Banana. Again, MBK solo. Yeah, very recurring themes. A lot of confidence shown for MBK to be constantly holding B by himself. And so far, he's passed all the tests, to be fair, but this is going to be full AKs. He hasn't came up against this just yet. He wants to get Envious taking their sweet time to make maneuvers on the B side. You know, I have too many nades to play with. He's starting to rein them into the site now. MBK needs that rotation. It's going to come in with a sense of apex and shocks. Being molotoved off. It hasn't been quite cordoned off to the extent that bombs were planted, though. MBK finally goes down, but now Apex is going to show up. Goes for the spray with the Enforce. Good for one kill before he's taken out the equation. They won't stop the bomb plant, but with Happy and Screen both low, it should be very doable for G2 to reclaim what was once theirs. RPK has gone on to Kenny. Shocks and body up against Happy and RPK. RPK with another one, he was a monster yesterday, and Happy will finish off the rest. Envious have done it. Maybe it's time for G2 to rethink their one man on B strategy. It was actually going okay there for the most part. It's just MBK went down with zero kills after a round where he had four. So if he would have just gotten one kill there, G2 has a, a two versus one retake, and that probably goes a lot differently. So I think that the way they rotated was fine. I mean, they had players arch and library. They, they got back, you know, in time. It's just MBK didn't find the frag. He kind of got caught. And that was the one kill that made the biggest difference. And then just, you know, Envy is playing out the 2v2 in the end very well, not allowing the retake to complete... They are going to see some aggression from G2 now in a round. They kind of force buy up. Money is low for them, so they decided to put all their eggs in this basket, knowing that they'll have to say next round this doesn't work. But a chance to fight back in if they can make it happen. And this aggression in apartments is still holding firm, and they find one, but the trades from Envious is too good. As they have a three on two. BK is about to get hot and heavy. In the alcove, he's very fortunate that hasn't quite spread to him. He's only about a millimeter or so away from ticking him down. He did have a smoke, wants to use that proactively rather than defensively. Oh. He gets sprayed through the smoke anyway. RPK reads the situation to perfection. I know Apex. No, this is a done deal. Yeah. It's got save written all over it. He's, yep. he's done. I will say this, MBK's utility users at Banana has been pretty on point. Like, every time that he's been alone and he's had to find a way to buy time, he's always timed out his smokes and uh, incendiaries very well. His, his flashes have been on point. He, he's doing his job as a side anchor is really the point I'm trying to make. Like, it's unfortunate that in the previous round he went down for free as far as frags go, but he's definitely done his duty as far as buying time for rotations and uh, stalling out any attacks on the site. That was another example of that there. He just got unfortunate in, in getting spammed through the smoke, and, and basically at that point, the round was over. Apex will look to save this AWP as best he can. You can see Happy is on the hunt. We'll see if they wind up interacting. Looks like no. Apex safely tucking in the T spawn, so he should be able to bring that over. Yeah, if he just hides in this angle, he'll be just fine. Plus his player's happy, but doesn't seem like he's going to get close enough to take this weapon away. So G2 at least salvaged the AWP. A slight saving grace and a, a slight silver lining, I guess. Going to drop back to Kenny. And keep his CZ. 
So there's going to be an eco by and large. They do have the power play of Kenny. He's actually gone in for armor on top of that. So he's going to be weakened in the next round. And it's unlikely to have a, an AWP again for a while if they were to lose this round. Gonna go for the early peak. Doesn't land anything. Three players on B this time around. And BK deciding with his USP to play aggressive in Banana. Decides better of that decision and will be backing away. Again, though, he's by himself, but this time, of course, with pistols. Yeah. Can't really expect too much. It's one of those things where G2's just trying to see what they can get out of this AWP. They're trying to move it all across the map. They're trying to give it the, the most opportunities to have an impact on the round. And now they're just stacking the A-bomb site and kind of just putting all their chips on the table here, which is fair enough. Like, in a situation like this, this is what you have to do to give yourself a chance to win. They do have an opening kill thanks to Apex. And now Kinney, he's looking for something. The timing's unreal. Able to dip out. Move the bomb towards Banana. McKenny is on the hunt. He's on the prowl. And with the kill on Happy, sure, there's three USPs, but there's a CZ and an AWP. This is doable. G2 have made less work in the past. Kenny peeking round. Perfect timing for one. Gonna miss out on the second one, uncharacteristically, but Apex is there with the CZ. He picked up two, and Kenny will go on to RPK. And in the round where they only had an AWP, they've now picked up another one, plus an AK. And things are looking rosy and great for G2 once again. And that's where G2 is just illustrating how to make the most out of limited resources. You know, making sure that you're shuffling that AWP around. You know, basically biting on any information that you get. I mean, normally, you know, you would say, oh, you don't want to over-rotate off of little information. Might come back to haunt you. And around like that, you don't really have a choice. You just have to try to be as active as you can be. You can see Kenny S goes for a B pick, doesn't work, rotates, gets a pick at Arch, shuffles back around like he's just trying to get the most out of it, just trying to be as dynamic as possible, and it, it really pans out. Apex also doing some great work as the one guy who also had a little bit of something to work with, with armor and a CZ. And so there you have it, G2. They take the lead right back and put Envy's economy in shambles. Obviously, Envy forced up what they can. It's not much, though. Double op for G2, one of the biggest teams to put this to use. Love the double op on both sides of the map, in fact. Different hands, though. Shox actually doesn't have one. It's going to be NBK with the other op. Yeah, it's as good as an AWP is on B. When you're on your own and you don't have flashes, oh, and you just get one tap like that from the Scream. The Juan Deeg to the forehead. Well, that speed just done. Scream's going to land a second. Not necessarily known for his orping ability, but that's a hell of a shot. And now G2, and they're reeling. They're like, finally, yes, we won this sort of eco round. Oh, we just got wrecked in the matter of two seconds by screen. Feels bad, man. That is indeed a sad Pepe, if you're MBK, particularly. If you got an AWP, you're holding an angle, you just get one dig. They talk about his one tap, we'll talk about him for sure this round, because it ties up the game. And now it's double lot for Envious, and G2, they do well to save three guns, so the, the reset's not going to hurt them as much as it could. They'll still have the one out for Kenny S, they'll still have a couple of rifles out there, they might be able to get some upgraded pistols. Shots could actually probably drop someone, in fact. So they'll still be alright in the next round for the most part, unless Envy can get some of these kills. So they're going to at least save these weapons, can drop two, they'll be able to get for yep. a, a decent buy again. But my question to you, Dust, is, is it time for them to put a second player on B? MBK's been doing solid. He's on 8 for 5. I don't necessarily blame him for this, but there's so much pressure for him to deliver on B site. I, think it's, I don't think that's the issue. Uh, I really don't, actually. I mean, I don't think him playing alone at B is a problem. I think, like I said, I think his utility usage has been on point. I, there, I mean, come on, man. Like, that's just kind of like one of those crazy... Um, you know, situations where he just gets one dig. you know what I mean? Like, you can't really harp on that too much. Uh, and then the other round where they lost at B, they actually had three people at B when they wound up losing the round, so they did the rotation properly. They just didn't win the gunfight. So I don't think that uh, rotating has been an issue for them, actually, except for that round. But, again, now it's kind of just one of those freak things where Scream makes a huge individual play. So, actually, I think it's been fine. I think they do well with how they place their A players to make sure they get quick rotates when they need them. 
Um, it's, it's like a, it's like an old school Counter Strike source thing, actually, uh, which some of these guys have been source players. Where you just it's called Drop Two, where you you have you know two uh, on art side and two by pit. So you have your side anchors basically pit balcony, and then you have people who can quick rotate arch library. Uh, and I think NBK knows exactly how that setup works and, and knows how to use utility to stall out B. I think he just got unlucky that round. Yeah, can't necessarily blame him, but I think the reason why I would like a second player and they've gone for one this round is if that does happen, at least you have some backup on the site yeah. to waste valuable time for the rest of your team to rotate. Like the round isn't instantly done in that sense. Um, it also yeah. would be nice to see them go active at banana. Like you, the triple peaking bananas is also something you can do. XMS has had a time in apartments, by the way. Like he's done really well at finding, you know, action here. Body just got wrecked through the wall as well, by the way, I think, by that orb. He's down to one. Quite literally, one HP dream. RPK is going to go for MBK. It does get traded out instantly. But that does put now all the pressure on Apex. As all four terrorists are starting to swarm this position. And he's going to get flashed and finished off from the P250. G2 still unable to get a real stranglehold over the CT side. Now, it's been a reoccurring theme in the new, new the new Inferno, pardon me, not the new new, new Inferno, that a lot of CT sides are struggling with how aggressive some T sides can be on their explosive flashbangs into the site. Looks like they're going to go for the save again. So Envious will be 5-4 in the lead. Yeah, I think XMS has just done a good job for Envious in being able to get opening picks in the apartments on a, pr on a fairly regular basis. And I think that just gives Envious a lot more freedom to force rotations and to, you know, make G2 have to scramble and make plays. And in that particular round, they just really capitalized on it. I mean, very clean stuff. Only lose one player on the round. So Envious are definitely bringing a good fight over here to G2. Again, they've both times they've played G2 on Inferno previous to this, they've lost. Granted, one of those games did go into overtime, so they've definitely had some close bouts in the past on this map. And domestic matchups can always be tricky. I mean, these are typically teams that you're practicing against that you know very well. Again, you, you mentioned it, some of these guys are former teammates. You kind of know what they like to do. So there's a lot of mind games that can go into it. And right now, Envious are, are making a hell of a T-side out of this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of these players have been playing with and against each other for years and years. You know, yeah, even going back to going previous versions back. of the game. Yeah. Exactly. Likes of RPK in particular. He's been around mm -hmm. the block several times. So we're going to go for the 3-2 formation again. Once again, though, this is with CZ and a Deagle, but they made a much worse buy than this stick earlier on. So we know they have it within them. Kenny's now going to be using the AWP on the Archer's side. He's gone for Glass Cannon. No Kevlar behind it. Then the... They're pretty slow and steady, I would say, overall, on their uh, T side thus far. They, they haven't necessarily mm -hmm. been rushing, they haven't been playing super aggressive. We've seen a couple of rounds where they have been more aggressive, but this is kind of what you come to expect on T side of Inferno now. Yeah, I mean, the meta is pretty much set, and it really hasn't deviated too much from previous versions of Inferno. Yeah, every now and then you'll see like a new kind of innovative smoke execute or something, but for the most part, everyone just works on getting control of apartments, getting control of top banana, and then working from there. And, and then like shifting around as we do see Envious falling off the banana already and actually getting control of the first part of middle, so they have their options open. Side to fade back. Ooh, RPK needs to be careful, didn't quite check it. But he wasn't punished, and BK unable to land any of those digs. But all those kind of angles, if you have a CZ, you're probably in better stead, but either way, he's gonna go down happy. And scream are doing a good job of just cleaning up the rest of the round. And although Kenny and Apex are in position to maybe make a go of this, they're heavily outnumbered, they're outgunned. And now Kenny is a lone wolf behind enemy lines with his AWP. Crazy reaction speed, crazy AWP up, but XMS is having none of it, just hops past him. And MB will take yet another one, 6-4 on the lead. Will be a buy though for G2. Yeah, again, one of those rounds where they had limited resources, had to take a gamble. Didn't really pan out. But now they are back onto a buy. No AWPs this time around. They have tried to go for double op in the past, but money is not available for something like that now. Got to prioritize having that utility, particularly on this map, to deny things like banana control. 
We are actually going to see G2 getting aggressive on that end of the map. They've actually pushed MBK all the way down towards Logs. Actually, that was Apex who pushed down, but now he's already retreated. His MBK will just kind of hold. Does have a smoke to redo this, and getting that headshot will certainly help things along. Definitely not a bad way of starting things off. The G2 have sacrificed the firepower in order to get more nades, which is so important on a map like Inferno City side. You want to be able to lock off angles for as long as possible. And of course, back in old Inferno, you'd be able to smoke from the other side of the map onto the likes of Banana and really just choke out the T's. Forty-five seconds, coming up through mid. More arches focused than anything else. It's going to be a double stack. Apex peeking around the corner. Double spray will be in fruition. NB have RPK. He's made a move on B, but he's going to fall by the wayside, leaving just six with an AWP. Going to do as much damage as he can. And any kills he gets from this point on will be worth their weight in gold. Because G2, they haven't been stable economically speaking, but shock staking him down is pretty massive. And although they can't get an AWP in their hands, and they'll be just fine to pick up another M4 in the hands of Kenny. Yeah, I mean, this game does have, hasn't really had either team dominate at any point. Like, you know, three round winning streaks are the biggest we've seen. Now, in that, G2 has been reset a couple of times. And that's a little bit dangerous, and they could get reset here again, which would mean a really big half for Envious at that point. Here, G2 has a chance to make this a 9-6 half so they can win out, so this half is still very much uh, in a heated contest. It's because of how, how the economies have really gone for both these sides. As once more, we are going to see G2 trying to take the initiative at Banana, using their utility to work their way downward. Well, MBK gift wrapped a free frag. That's Twice in a ex row. Exactly what Envious didn't want to happen. They've got to keep that pressure applied. I feel like G2's side is going to be pretty damn good here, but Kenny, in the meanwhile, has a job to do, and he's only half done it. Two kills is solid, but he was hoping for a third. Six is going to get the plant down. He is by himself for the time being. He's happy he's gone walking through mid. Oh, but that timing. will yield him a kill. I know Apex. In all sorts of bother. Two separate angles to watch out for. Six is the first player. Plans a frag on him. Attention to happy, but happy. A leaping to victory. And G2, they have been reset once again. And it hurts for, for them, I imagine. You know, you get the opening kill at Banana on MBK again. That's two rounds in a row that G2's had an instant five on four off of how they've played Banana. But it just didn't matter. Envious just shifted their focus immediately towards a heavy apartments play. Screen with a great entry to help them get out. And then Happy finishing things off with a couple of kills there. Particularly just catching a really bad time. And MBK was running mid. Just happened to check window the moment Happy beats him. And Happy able to get the last two kills on the round to finish the job. And as you noted, economy reset again for G2. They'll we'll buy up all they can here. Can't blame them. They're going to have to save next round whether they lose this one or not. So... Or if they lose this one. So it's best just to go ahead and try to get the best buy you can now and hope that you can fight right back, and especially since there's not much time left in the half. Yeah, this could be the round that really sets in motion how this half is going to end. If Envious take it, 10-5 is a very realistic score. But Happy, this time is first to fall. However, in the previous round, G2 did pick up the first frag and it just collapsed for them. They're going to be able to connect the dots in the second as well. Scream goes down to the hands of Shox. He's on a bit of a tear this round so far. Also very important they got these kills dust because they lack utility. They lack kits. They needed to get the kills early and they've yep. done just that. Congregating outside of B. Bomb in the hands of Sixer. Plenty of firepower. Plenty of nades still to maybe try a set play on the B site. Two Molotovs. Two smokes. Plenty of flashes. And it will be a 2v3 for the time being, and I shot to get himself around. He's starting to move around the CT side. Play more aggressively, up close and personal around BK and Apex. And that's going to yield at least one kill. And BK is able to dart back to the site. And Sixer, you don't have the time side. If you want to go for the bomb plant, it needs to be on B. But I'm pretty sure he just wants to save now. And as soon as he backs away, it's going to be a save instead. 
And it's not like G2 can necessarily charge these kills down. They have very little economy themselves. They want to keep it ticking forward. So both teams will be relatively happy to uh, just back off and save the weapons they had. Yeah, this is a great solo effort from Shox on the arch side. Those two opening kills were massive. It gave G2 an early advantage that they were able to put to use throughout the round. Did get some assistance. It was a good pot flash that came from Pit to help him peak the first player. So a little bit of teamwork goes a long way for G2 as they put a sixth round on the board. They avoid any more tough economic times, at least for now. And they are just one round away from tying this up. And it'd be actually a triple banana stack to start things off. But as I say, that body got boosted up and is able to just deliver by himself. Big play for him. MBK has not left banana, so he'll catch RPK lurking. And this round has gone by the wayside. Now, Happy did a bit of damage towards the end. But of course, with just one round left, doesn't really matter. G2 can afford to replenish their lost weapons. No issues. So it doesn't really make much difference. Now, Envious... When it really counts, their economies let them down. Just Happy's able to get an AK. Everyone else is going to be coming through with pistols. Sure, it includes XMS on a Deagle. Already seen him land a few 1Ds. Scream with a Deagle. Pretty damn savage. But G2 have every advantage in their favor now to take the 8-7 lead at halftime. They need to convert this, though. Yeah, it was just Envious trying to pick up the pace. You know, try to change the tempo. Do something a little bit quicker in the early round, but unfortunately for them, they, they decided to hit lane, the one round body is boosted in an awkward position for them to handle and they don't come up with it. Now, as you noted, limited resources trying to get into B, shut down by NDK once more. You could see what they were going for. Like typically when you're gonna hit B, you're gonna have flashes and smokes preceding it. And so just, they kind of telegraphs it, just going through without any nades. Can catch the enemy off guard and scream has put down MBK, had a few cracks at Apex as well. He's run out of bullets, he's gonna switch to his USB and lands two onto Scream and Happy. G2 will take the lead at half time, but at one point it was looking like that could slip away. At one point it was even poised to potentially be a, a 5 10 half for Envious, so not bad at all for G2 to bounce back. Yeah, that was definitely what you'd call a slobber knocker of a half, right? I mean, it was very back and forth. Again, I don't think anyone ever streaked together more than three rounds the entire half. There was a lot of resets involved, a lot of scrappiness due to economy resets throughout it. Uh, certainly some big individual plays, particularly MBK on Banana had some really big plays. Uh, several rounds where he got early picks at bottom Banana, or, you know, he had that big 4K round, or, you know, that last round he, he had, a, you know, the, the initial two kills. Uh, so he definitely did a lot of, of, of good work. Shocks also had uh, a pretty big individual play on our side on the round where they were on a four spy that really helped them along. So definitely just, you know, some people stepping up for G2 at times to, you know, keep them afloat basically and eventually get them ahead before the half closes. Got to give some shouts to G2 though as well. Scream had that big deagle play that certainly helped things along. I thought XNS did a great job uh, coming out of apartments a lot and, and getting his team early advantages at times on that side of the map. So, I mean, both teams definitely had a pretty solid half coming out of that. And in fact, he may even favor Envious just a bit. It does depend on how this pistol goes and what G2 has in store for us on the T side. Yeah, I feel like it's it's one of those kind of situations where both teams will be relatively happy with the half. I think both teams will be like, okay, yeah, this, this is kind of an even playing field. It could have gone very brutally in Envious' favor. But still, seven rounds on T side is not bad at all. As you say, though, this pistol is pretty damn important. If, if G2 pick it up, they're looking at potentially 11-7 lead. And then Envious, that first rifle round, is going to be incredibly important. No. Yep. But let's see. Is that going to be an issue? And they have Whoa. to contend with. Three player stack in Banana and XMS and four. RPK. Oh, it actually was four. Yeah, six have pulled away after the kill. Leaving Happy round the back. And he is lurking in apps. But this time on the CT side... And he's waiting for the right moment to pounce. They're not going to expect him to be coming out of the outside. Shox is going to lose his life as a result. As will Kenny at the end. Envy. Very interesting pistol round. And it's worked to charm. They only lose one player in the process. That was unreal. I mean, I've never seen someone push four players down banana on a pistol round like that before. Triple banana sore. But definitely had an added twist to it. And it really did come up for Envious. Crazy thing was, is G2 did kind of bypass, and I thought they might at least get a bomb plant, but then Happy comes out the balcony as they were focused on fighting mid through lane, and actually gets the bomb planter down by himself. You know, he kind of went undetected, so big play from Envious. 
that will tie things right back up and give them the advantage going into these early rounds. So we do see G2 forcing up those pistols and armor, so it still pose a huge threat. More to a standard setup for Envious this round, though. Just three playing towards A, two towards B, so about what you'd expect. All SMGs. Give me them sweet dollar bills. Except, except if it's you holding a UMP, of course, and it doesn't really work out. Oh, mate, I'm the worst UMP player in the world. So I'll, I'll yeah. definitely hold my hand. Your clips have that. certainly been around the Reddit with UMPs and oh, fire nice. lately. That was a good one. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a really good player. They that shouldn't book. even call it the 1G anymore. They should call it the Vince. <laughs> I think. It was pretty special, wasn't it? Yeah. Smoke's I mean, on point. Apex gets flash, gonna be pushing to the side. He's gonna check behind him though with his two players. And Kenny with the tech nine is gonna completely shred. Oh, G2 with pistols have put Envy in their place. XMS and Scream must be like, dudes, what the hell? Help me out here, bruvs. I mean, it's been a point that's been beat to death over the years on just the French's capacity to win rounds like this. I mean, LD, LCZ was a thing uh, just just how to use these upgraded pistols is just something that these teams have always been able to do fanatic very well known for it as well we have seen some nerfs being sprinkled in here and there on the pistols lately so i'm, I'm kind of curious how that will affect the game but it seems like it hasn't really had a huge impact yet i mean because the thing is a tech nine still can be a laser beam off the first bullet it's just that the spam has been somewhat nerfed yeah, I mean, it, it's it's weird with the, the potential nerfs, because some people actually consider them to be slight buffs in some cases. Yeah, they, they can be considered that, I think. It's fair. In the right hands of Tech 9 now, it has the precision of a sniper almost. It's, it's insane. If you can get the one taps straight off the bat, you can just clean house to 5-7. It's more of a turret weapon now on the CT side, of course, and you set up into crossfires. That can be ridiculous. So it's yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious to see if the if the meta will change or if it'll just stay the same. Oh, happy is mad. Oh yeah, that's triggered. He Ross is the inverse of his name right now. There's yeah. no question. He's done. He's been plastered through the wall. RPK, not quite able to get it done. Nearly apex on four. Now MBK, he's gonna land himself a kill. So. In fairness to Envy, they're doing damage in these confrontations. It's just the superior firepower is coming through. And that's yeah. all off the back, of course, of Happy getting smashed right off the bat. That was a great opening kill to get, essentially completely for free. I mean, there was no threat posed while he was going for that duel. So, I mean, it was just all free pickings for G2. And now it all comes down the screen next to Ness. Trying to guard lane. They're getting all the kills. Are you even kidding me? They're actually maybe going to bring this thing back. As I say, that Kenny S is trying his damnedest to stop it from happening. But Scream has pitched in now as well. And it comes down to a 1v1 where Apex only has 4 HP. And Scream has the superior weapon. Has his superior positioning as well. Apex is able to get himself the bomb, though. Maybe he can scamper off. He doesn't have much time to play with. If he's going to rotate, it needs to happen right now. 20 seconds. This is cutting it incredibly fine. You should get it. Just build up the suspense. Yeah, he's got this plant. With about five seconds to go, we'll have the plant. And now, scream. He's feeling a little bit sad about that fact. AK-47, couple flashes, has a kit as well. You still fancy him to clutch it. And he's walking at this stage because he's not sure as to where Apex could be. So he has to re respect the, every angle when he comes up against the likes of the tree in construction. May even have a look towards Banana as well. Looking at Trash, going to just tap the bomb Apex. If he peeks right now... Screams are gonna. He's playing the time perfectly, and Apex will get it done. You've got to feel bad for Scream. He did such a good job with his 3K, but it wasn't enough. And down Apex he goes. Apex survived? What the hell? Wow, that round end must have, like, just been the most clutch round end of all time. I thought that bomb was killing him for sure. Gets a free AK out of that as well. It's a little icing on the cake. Yeah, man. I mean, that really does just come down to... 
the way that Apex planted it and the smoke that he threw, like you said, it made it forced Screen to respect every angle. And that really slowed him down. Oh. Rip. That's a one tap. And we are into a pistol round ultimately with just a couple of CZs, PT-50s. That sort of assortment of weaponry. So they go for the aggressive banana play. This is going to be body padding his stats with three. And Scream, the last player, is also in banana. So G2 starting to take a real hold of this map now. After they lost the pistol, they instantly broke NV. They've not let them surface to breathe just yet. No players lost. Money in the bank. Yeah, what a roller coaster ride, man. I mean, Envious were almost winning that round, and they might have been the one taking the lead away from G2. Instead, G2 pulls out in front a bit more. And with those two Mac 10s and just knowing G2, G2 typically is one of those teams that will be a bit more assertive on Inferno T sides. Like, they will, you know, do faster apartments pushes more often than other teams will. They will try to be a little bit more in your face. Just like I said, a little bit faster paced than maybe the slower defaults that you saw Envy doing a lot of the time. As we do see them trying to quickly come up, Banana but Scream with the M4 absolutely puts up a brick wall to that. Two key kills. From that man will put a screeching halt to G2. Yeah, just aggressive in banana. And G2 were also aggressive themselves. They're pushing up towards the car. Weren't slowing down at all. I think the idea may have even been to keep charging on the B site, but as you say, Scream derailing the juggernaut. Having none of it. I believe they came into this round with a couple of Mac 10s though, G2, so mm -hmm. they are still gonna have plenty of money in the bank, even if they were to lose this round. Yeah, you got to think that play was motivated by the fact that they had Mac 10s and they wanted to try to get in someone's face and make the most of them. Yeah. You got to play to your weapon strengths. You can't play long range engagements against MBS's full buy with Mac 10. You've got to try and get up close and personal, but Scream was up to the task. Bomb still just outside of Banana. Flashes are landing. Apex can't see a single thing. And a Scream will put him out of his misery. Three kills. Hasn't lost a single point of health, but XMS has. He's lost his head. And with the smoke on CT side, it does afford him to move through onto the B side of the map. Alongside NBK now. This is getting a bit dangerous, but Sick is going to thread the shot through the smoke and Scream finds body. And we'll take him down for the 4K. Excellent work by Scream. Yeah, a lot of credit goes to Scream for sure. Those opening two kills really set the pace of the round. Giving Envious the advantage, and they roll it through for a victory, making the score 9 to 11. So the game does remain very close, but we do have another full buy coming out of G2 here because they were kind of conservative holding on to those two Mac 10s. They did store up some, some bankroll, and they will still have a fully decked out T side coming for you in this one. So does Envious, though. They have everything at their disposal as well, and we do see G2 slowing things down. As MBK and Apex are looking to get control of apartments here. Typical stuff from them. So, it's about as default as it gets for G2 to open things up. But they're focusing up on mid pretty early. They've already left body off B. So again, just, you see G2 taking a little bit more initiative early round. Definitely more aggressive in getting into positions. But that's going to cost them another life. Apex this time will meet his maker. Thanks to Happy. And he's peering through. Does miss the shot. He'll be disappointed with that. Goes to the second. Not quite on point. The screen goes peeking through on the archer's side. And he will be punished. That opens up some gateways now. And more importantly for G2. They now have the option to go for the rotation. It would be just against XMS. This might be in the back of their mind. They're running out of time though. And every second that passes makes it more likely that A will be the site that they go for. Happy again. Perfect timing on the peak. Kenny again will miss his opportunity in pits. And every single one of these that goes by now for opportunities missed is pretty much giving more and more credence to Envious winning this round. Happy's going to pick up four. Is actually on for the aces to take it down with the USP. Envy shutting out G2. Only losing two players. 
That's a that's an all happy all day round. All five frags went to him. That first one, that ankle he was holding to get the first kill, is just so nasty, and that really did just completely crush D2. Like it slowed everything down. They were going so fast up middle up until that point. Then they lose a man. They kind of slow down. They hesitate. They're rethinking things. And then the biggest kill I think Happy gets that round is when he pushes and kills the player under porch. Because I think that you know G2 were still maybe having a chance to adjust body killed screen. They were thinking about falling back to B maybe. But then when Happy takes that initiative, that is when all things fold. And now we have a force buy round for G2, but bodies found the first blood. The response from Sixer is swift. So it's already down to a four on four. A great opening dig by body there. Awesome stuff onto XMS. Let's get answered back instantly as you highlighted. Happy this time has decided to play more of an aggressive position on quad. Typically been playing pits. As you say as well, he's had a couple of disgusting angles in pit that G2 just couldn't see. Oh, Happy, he's going to catch MBK with his knife out. The freest of kills that he will take for himself. Screams by himself for the time being, but Sixer is making inroads. He's flanking with the AWP. Could go for the pit. He's, he definitely doesn't get flashed or just straight up rushed down. Body's gonna land another 1D, but Six is up to the task for one, misses the second. That could cost him his life. RPK's very low at the back, and he gets he's headed down. This is quickly getting into horrible territory for Envy. So important for their economy, so important for their CT side, they took this round out. And convincingly, it's been anything but happy. Hot off the back of an ace. Now has a one-on-two clutch ahead of him, and it won't be happening. Kenny threads the headshot. G2 have just bodied Envious again. You got to wonder if the, if this game ends in favor of G2, if it really is going to come down to those two rounds, right? The one we just watched and the one that happened a little while ago in the second round. Or the, these four spies of pistols from G2 have... That's the difference maker. That's why they're two rounds ahead. And they could even gain more out of it because now Envious is on the back foot. They have to try to make something happen with the force. They're going to go for their pistol round strat. Four players B. Happy looking to take initiative at middle with the Deagle. He is peeking the op of Kenny S. He's playing with fire, but he will back down. He did do a little bit of damage, but the frag was not there. Shock's trying to see if he can't replicate past glory of spending the apartments, but this time no one will be there to greet those bullets. As G2 just kind of take their time, look to really assert dominance and extend this lead as money is so low for Envy. They lose this, G2 will really start approaching that point. Yeah, with Scream and RPK putting uh, pretty much their savings into this round, they're not going to quite recover in time, potentially. G2 moving up mid once again, also through apps. A standstill moment, 40 seconds, going to have to start to get a move on Apex, taking point in a very forward position. Sees the head of RPK peeking up over the box and dispatches of it alongside Happy. So all the A defense crumbled and Body was waiting for that flank round from our side. Has been flawless so far by G2. Scream may be able to get in on the action, but in the back of their minds, they're going to be thinking, well, Scream has put quite a lot of money into this round. He's only got $50 left. It actually wouldn't be a bad idea for him to save this seed at an armor. Yep. He likely will have very little to do in the next round. Otherwise, uh, what's, what's realistically the chances of you getting a 2v5 clutch with no nades other than a flash, no kits, and you're up against a full arsenal of weaponry? Very, very low. It's not worth right. it. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel like the biggest difference maker in this game between these two teams is A, the fact that G2 have made four spies work, uh, particularly two key rounds this half. And then on top of that, they have handled four spies very well. Like, a lot of the times I've seen Envious do these four spy rounds, G2 has won them clean. And that's big for their own economy. That's big for not allowing, you know, Envious to get them right back and, and keep the, the game within a round of each other. So, I mean, even though Envious have come close several times, and even at one point in the last half, they looked really good. You know, ever since this has started, like, every time Envious were on the heels of G2, G2 made sure to kind of shut the door and stay ahead. And now they have a chance to just continue that onward. There's even less to deal with from Envious in this round. Again, they're going to have to just gamble. They're going to stack A, but Kenny S, yes, he's, he's sniffing it out with the AWP. He's got some assistance with him. 
Not much envious can do about this. Kenny S. Overkill with a headshot, 400 plus damage. And Shucks just spins around on a pivot, swiveling his way to a headshot onto RPK. XMS is going to come back with one of his own onto Apex, though. So they're keeping themselves at least roughly even. Not letting this round get out of control just yet, but now it's going to sort of spiral out his happy. Does what he can with the AWP. The uh, Deagle, pardon me. I'm saying the AWP because Body just picked one up. But not able to get anything to stick. And now MB pretty much in last chance saloon territory. G2 on the brink of taking this map. And by the way, Envious picked Inferno. Right. So it doesn't bode well for Envious going across the cache if they were to lose this. No, certainly not. Like you said, this is their map pick. And when you're going over to cache, I mean, that's been a pretty damn good map for G2. I will say that it's not as if Envious are, are, are poor on cash. Like online, they've actually been pretty good. So it is a map that the French have been fairly comfortable with through the years. This is the last chance for Envy is really you have to feel like their best bet at making something work and RPK helps it along. That's a great entry to get and they're able to get out of there. No trade from G2 available on that. No one from Envy lingers around to give them that opportunity. That's exactly what Envy has needed. Something clean to kick things off. They even have the early rotation to A as well, and that is where G2 are committing again. A very stark contrast to Envious. They've been prone to commit early in rounds to something rather than kind of float on, but it uh, looks like they're looking to get out lane. Gonna go for the boost as well. This is going to afford them a different angle. While Flashbang on Kenny does drop down, he's been missing this particular shot quite a few times already. Won't be missing it this time, though. RPK is drilled, put into position. A good time for Kenny to start finding his range. They saw Happy. That nade lands on Happy's head. Doesn't do as much damage as anticipated, but Screen does take this opportunity to push up. Nearly gets a double. And we'll get the kill onto Kenny at the very least, but the frags are being traded. Time itself is scarce. 15 seconds now. No more time for messing around. G2 have got to get stuck in. They've got to move into position. First kill's going to go down. Puts all the pressure in the world down. Expected. Shoulders, but he's able to get one. No, there isn't enough time to get the ball plant, but there is enough time to get the kills. And six goes down with three seconds. Heartbreaking for Envy. G2 just about slither to a 15th round. That did come down to the wire when it came to the clock, but I think the funniest thing is Happy thought for sure that no one saw him, and they totally did. It's like that joke that Louis C.K. does about shocks, sharks. Like He's like, how bummed out do you think sharks are? They think they're being all sneaky, but you see their fins sticking out the water, and it's like, yep, there's a shark there. And it was it was Happy, the butt of his gun stuck up one time when Kenny S. was peeking pit with the AWP, and so they knew the whole time that he was there. Right, and so once you know Kenny S got the op pick on Pit, and they were starting to clear out some of these other kills, they knew that they had Happy pinned down, and that's why you saw them kind of, you know, send a player apartments, you know, keep Kenny S holding the angle, using utility, and then clearing him out was really key because that opened up the A bomb site for them a bit more. And even though it came down to those last couple of seconds, I think that kill on Happy really was pivotal to make sure that they would have a chance to kind of keep a man advantage. Now it could be the last round of the game as Apex does find that entry onto RPK against a limited buy from Envy. Yeah, be holding on by a thread at this stage. Oh, there's a Molotov there, Kenny. Don't want to get vaporized just yet. On the back side will be XMS with his D. He's going to lay two players to rest. The Grim Reaper collecting body. We'll be able to carve himself a path through mid, pick up the bomb. No one on B for time being, although XMS has called this. He will be rotating to try and greet the body. Happy in the meanwhile, bomb for one, gets traded out. And now the bomb can re-rotate to A. And XMS had the right idea, but he needed Happy to stay alive. And as soon as Happy dies, now XMS is basically at the mercy of the RNG gods as to where this bomb's going. Now he realizes it must be A. He's made a very quick reaction play through mid. Now, typically, he'd want to pick up this AK, but he doesn't want to make noise and alert either of G2's players to his presence. So he's going to be going in with the Deagle instead of the Mag-7. Both very potent weapons up close and personal, especially in the hands of XMS. He's got the first one. Oh, and the second one tap! XMS 
deagling his way to victory with a 4K, and Envious will live to fight another day. Give him a moment of silence. He deserves it. What an individual play from XMS. He got those two early deagle kills to set that up. Potty's response was on point, though. When he got those two kills, I'm thinking, okay, like, G2, they've done it. But I think he hit the nail on the head. The fact that he comes through silently through lane, he doesn't swap guns, he doesn't give up his position, he just sneaks his way in, lands two more sick one digs, and wins the round for his team, keeps them alive on Inferno. Now, to be fair, they still have an uphill battle to climb because they're, you know, they're sitting on three from us right now. The utility's low. So, G2 does still have the advantage when it comes to firepower and utility, and they have the cushion of four rounds. But at least that keeps Envious afloat. Well done. I think the development of XMS is what's been the most key for Envy. I think when he first joined, he kind of had some growing pains, but he's really coming to his own lately, and he's kind of one of the key players for the team, and that was a big play. He's a guy that we used to cast, uh, I'm pretty sure, way back in the Seaboat days, and he, he always else. impressed See? us. Yep. Yeah. I believe he's been on a team with like Twanu in that, right? Mm hmm. Good to see how far he's come. But the job's not done just yet. There's still four more rounds required to hold off for overtime. This one started pretty well, two on four. It would be a kick to the plums if Envious were to lose this from this point. But they are aggressing on the site that's weaker. And G2 will be able to get the plant down. This is going to start to get a bit sketchy now for Envy. They have an, a kit and they have a few fly, uh, smokes, pardon me. G2 not making a single move. Don't want to give anything away for free. Throwing down their soul Molotov on the CT side. Going to be aggressed on. It's down to body. Won't be happening this time. Solid retake. Envy. Three more to go. And this game has been an absolute brawl. Very back and forth affair. Very similar to last half. We haven't had too many big winning streaks. Without them being broken up by the opponent. And now this is Indius' turn. They've been putting on a couple of rounds. G2 does get that bomb plant though. So that gives them the ability to get some AKs out here. Get some utility sets. Get head armor on everyone. So they're basically still on a full buy thanks to that plant. And that's big news for them. They can still look to go ahead and punch this one through. They still get three cracks at it before extra rounds are going to be needed. But Envious are playing really well. They're doing their damnedest to try to force that overtime. And they're not too far from it now. As again, we do see G2, as usual, you know, kind of, you know, putting a heavy emphasis or something early. Looking again for middle. Some S play was the catalyst for some inspiration for MB to have a second win. But XMS, the man, insult has gone down. And now the kills are coming through. A plenty free firing around the corner. It's a position a lot of players will go to now up on the box. And this puts Scream in a one on four. He's got to go for broke. No nades to play with. Has a kick. Has M4. He's going to have to come down to fragging. The guy has talent coming out of his ears, but he's been completely locked down off these smokes and mollies. Screen going to peek it through library. There's the first one. It's not a clean kill, though. He's down to 48. Goes back out, and then BK will silence him and Envy. G2 pick up Envious' choice of map Inferno, and we'll be heading to cash with them in a pretty huge advantage. Wow, what a game though, man, I have to say. These teams definitely put on a show. It was definitely a back and forth affair. Very tight race, awesome rounds to watch. A lot of big individual plays, a lot of really cool clutch moments. It definitely had a little bit of everything sprinkled in. It was a great mixture of Counter-Strike and it was a lot of fun to watch. Envious doing their damnedest to put up a good fight even though they were you know, the clear underdog. They certainly didn't make it look that way through a lot of that game, so props to them but unfortunately it you know close doesn't count it's all about getting the w in the end and g2 do that they take the map away from envy they move on to cash with a map advantage and you know they're they're looking to kind of hold that spot as favorites and move on to play in the finals later on today to try to get that one slot that is left for europe for new york so shout to them it was like i said a really fun game to watch vince i totally agree i think inferno's 
sometimes a, a little bit dull to watch on T's side because it's pretty much the same thing every round. But I like the G2 were throwing in extra things, as you say. The other semi-finals you can see on your screen right now, Big and Gambit. But we're going to cut for a quick break, guys. When you rejoin us, we'll be live for Cash Map 2. Stick with right with us. We'll be right back.